This video is part two of a series on SM64 Decomp ROM hacking. In this episode, we'll cover the basics of level creation, including how to make a terrain mesh, how to set floor materials, a quick way to make good looking UV maps, and how to use objects. This video is released alongside part three of the series, which covers how warps work and how to implement them in a level, as that will not be covered in this episode. If that's what you're looking for, it will be the first link in the description. The first episode went over how to install Fast64 for Blender, but I'll do a quick rundown. Go to blender.org, download, and install. Go to Fast64 repository and download the zip. In Blender, install as external add-on and check the box to enable. Outside of installation, there is one other download, which is the Blender template made by someone2639. Again, this will be in the description. Opening this template up in Blender, we are greeted by a cube and lots of boxes. First off, these giant boxes in space represent the max level size, the first one being default SM64 and the others being available if you use a version with the extended bounds patch. You can get that either by patching yourself or using Ultra SM64 extended bounds. For this tutorial, we will be using an unpatched version of the SM64 ROM so we can remove these extended bounds to simplify the scene. At this point, we should have a scene with only a floor, the default level bounds, and an empty box in the middle. Before we add things, I would recommend making sure you can export and build this to your decomp. Press N to bring up this toolbar if it isn't already out, and switch to the SM64 tab. Set the decomp location to the base directory of your decomp, which is where the assets, bin, and source folders are. If you're using the Ultra SM64 version, switch compression type to Yay0, otherwise you can leave it. Down in the SM64 level exporter menu, you can select the level you want to overwrite. For this series, I'm going to overwrite Jolly Roger Bay, for no real reason other than I feel like it. Finally, we can select the My Level node in the scene hierarchy and click Export. Note that you do need to select the level's base node, which in this case is the My Level object. If it exported correctly, you should see a message at the bottom right telling you it worked, and it's now present in your decomp folder. All that's left to do is build your decomp and launch the game. If your Blender export fails, go back and make sure you set the correct folder and options. If that doesn't work, reopen the template from the beginning and try again. Unfortunately, a lot of the messages can be vague, so you usually have to play around with it until you get it working. Back to the emulator, if you open your ROM and it stays on a black screen instead of opening, you need to change the RAM settings to 8 megabytes instead of the default 4. Project 64 has this in the config menu for the ROM, but if you download the latest nightly version of 3.0, you can set the default RAM size to 8. If you do use the nightly version, note that a new per ROM folder option is enabled by default. If you're used to Project 64 2.3 and below, this option can be disabled to have functionally the same saves. Now that we've confirmed we can build a level, it's time to actually do something with it. I'll start by removing the cube and adding a plane in its place, and scaling it out to a bigger size. I'll right-click, subdivide so I have more vertices to work with, then I'll select a few of those faces, press E to extrude up, and do it again with these faces. These faces don't have any SM64 specific material information, so we'll add that now by selecting the faces we want, going to the Material tab, and create a new Fast 3D material. I'll just name this Ground and set the color to a dark green. To actually see the material, hold Z and select Rendered. Lastly, make the plane a child of Area 1. At this point, exporting and rebuilding decomp gives us this level, but there's one main thing missing. Since there's no death plane under the level, we can't actually jump off the edge. To quickly fix this issue, we can add a plane, scale it to the level's bounds, and add a new material. Uncheck Show Simplified UI, set the draw layer to transparent, and set the D alpha to zero. This just has it render as transparent, but to set it as a death plane, we have to change the collision type to death plane. This plane needs to be decently far below the level, otherwise Mario will die immediately after leaving the level's edge, like so. If this happens, you can just lower the plane a good bit and it should be fixed. Time for textures. I'll first change the material to shaded texture. I've imported the grass from Bob on Battlefield to a nearby folder. Expanding the texture zero properties, I'll locate that texture and select it. I've decided that I want these walls to be the dirt texture from Bob on Battlefield, so I'll select these faces, create a new material, and follow the same steps as before. As you may have noticed, the textures are stretched rather than tiling. This gets amplified if we grab an edge and stretch the face. Instead of having to painstakingly UV map every face, we can go to add-ons and enable UV magic. Then we can select the faces we want to remap, press U, UVW, and box. This allows us to tile our textures to the size we want. At this point, we have a pretty decent foundation to make levels, but levels aren't just made up of geometry. To truly get this level going, we need to add objects, like enemies or moving platforms. Fast64 can also take care of objects for us, and for the first one, we'll just add a Goomba to this level. 
we can start by Shift A, Add Empty, Plane Axes. If we go to the Object Properties menu, we can specify this as a type of object with a model of Goomba. And down in the Behavior selector, we can set as Goomba Behavior. Outside of this, there are the Behavior parameters, which I'll address more in depth when dealing with warps in the next episode, but a quick lesson is this. The Behavior parameter is treated as four different one-byte numbers, rather than a four-byte number. In our case, we don't need to set anything up. If we export the level and build our ROM, we can see that the Goomba is up and walking around. Well, maybe not anymore. For the functionality, this is all for this episode, but I have one quick tip about walls. If collisions for walls seem a bit wonky, like this, that's because they need to be almost completely vertical to count as a wall. My tip for that would be to select the vertices of one of the vertical edges of the wall, press S, Shift Z to scale in the X and Y axes, and press 0 to set X and Y at the same. If we do this for both vertical edges of the wall, it should count as a wall now.